Hey, what's up? Gleb here for CreativeFrame.com. Creative Shrimp is the place where artists go to learn tips and tricks about computer graphics, art, lighting, and coffee brewing. And today, in this introductory lighting tutorial, we'll talk about seven basic qualities of light. These are the essential properties of light, and I believe it's impossible to master lighting in computer graphics without learning this vocabulary, which is being used by photographers, filmmakers, and creative folks around the world. So keep watching! In this tutorial, we'll be taking a look at seven qualities of light that everyone should know. The first one is intensity. The second one is color. The third one is softness. The quality of light that depends on the relative size of the light source. After that, we'll talk about direction. And the fifth quality of light that we will cover is light texture. We'll see some fancy examples, so keep watching. The sixth quality will be distribution. And the final quality of light for today is movement. And this looks gorgeous. And I bet you wonder, who made this robot? Okay, okay, big thanks to Jerry Perkins, aka Master Zeon, for giving us this amazing model, made using hard ups on for Blender. Thanks, Jerry, and let's get started. Before actually moving on to the first quality of light, I'd like to talk about the render settings. So the preview samples are set to 256, bounces are set to zero, because it will be easier for us to concentrate on particular qualities of light without the bounced lighting. I hope that makes sense. And the start resolution is set to 512. That just makes the viewport slightly more responsive during the updates. And before you ask, this background gradient is nothing more than gradient texture, with the mapping node connected into it. Then we have this color ramp to colorize this whole thing. And the strength of the background is set to the very low number. So I switched back to the object mode of the shader editor and let's move on to the first point, that is intensity. This quality of light is pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? How strong the light source is, how much energy it is emitting. So for this demonstration, I will turn on the uh, viewport rendering of cycles. And I'll keep it on for the rest of the tutorial. Alright, so let's go to the light source settings. This is the spotlight. It has the strength of 100. And if we hold shift and click and drag to the right, we can increase it. Drag to the left, decrease it. Or we can just click and type the exact number, like 10,000. This is some abstract units. Keep in mind that the actual intensity of light will also depend on the distance from the light source to the model. So we can set it to any number and we can set it so high that it will get clipped uh, by the color management of Blender. So that is the first quality of light, intensity. And as I've said earlier, the actual intensity of the light source also depends on the distance between the object and the light source. Because <clears throat> intensity of the light is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. That is what Wikipedia says, and it's very nerdy. In other words, if you double the distance between the light source and the object, the light will get four times less intensive because of that square thing. The second quality of light is color. In fact, it does correlate with the intensity to some degree, and we'll explore that in a moment, but for now let's click and drag to resize this window or rather to create the additional window and let's set it to the node editor because you can tweak all the parameters of the light source in the node editor. So let's click on the color and here you can choose any color you want. What a groundbreaking surprise, isn't it? You can choose my favorite peachy color or just some shade of blue, very boring. Or if you feel scientific, uh, you can go shift A, select converter, black body. Using this node, you can define the exact temperature of the light source, just connect it to the color sockets of the emission shader. Now you can click on the temperature and set it to some number like 3000 degrees or 4 or 5. And basically, the higher is temperature, uh, the more blue is the light source. Just as we know, a blue flame is much hotter than an orange flame, and the space bodies that have bluer tint also have higher temperature. Oh my goodness, it's so much fun to record these tutorials. I feel like a total geek, and I love it. So, and the third thing that I want to talk about is the image texture used in the color socket. You can add the image texture node, select the texture. For example, let's select this quasar from SpiceVFX Elements. Let's click Open Image. 
In a couple of minutes, we'll talk about light textures. So you can see how various qualities of light are interdependent. Okay, so we added the image texture. Let's now go Shift A, input and add texture coordinates. Take the normal output and hook it up to the vector input of the image texture. And what I'll do next, just for a quick demo, is add vector mapping. Mapping node and drop it in here. And maybe let's also set the intensity higher. Like this. Now we can click and drag on the location to slide the texture coordinates of this light source. So here is what we do if we aren't satisfied with the uniform color of the light source. We just add the light texture. So here we have the second quality, this is color. When we want to describe the color of the light source, we usually say something like peachy or indigo. But also what we can do is describe the individual values of the color channels, like red channel, green channel and blue channel. Or we can use a special code for the color, which starts with a hashtag. Alright, cool. And the third one is softness. Or maybe harshness. Or softness. It's all semantics. It doesn't matter at all. Let's just add the area lamp. Go Shift A, select lamp, area lamp. So here we have the area light. And by default it had the size of 0.1. It's a very small light indeed. And before tweaking its size, I'm going to tweak the strength of it. Alright, so now we can click on the size and type something like 0.01 .01 to make it extremely small. Right away you can notice that the shadows became razor sharp. And we can click and drag right to increase the size of the light source. And as we are increasing the light size, the light is getting softer and softer, you can see it. The light rays now illuminate larger area of the model, to the point of wrapping around the model. And as a side effect of the light source getting larger, we can see that it is getting less intensive. Because the energy of the light source stays the same, but now it spreads on this large area. Of course, we can compensate for it by cranking up the strength or the intensity of the light source. Now we literally only can see the contact shadows, the ambient occlusion. And we can almost say that we no longer feel the direction. So here's a quick comparison of the various light sizes. You can see that on the left we have 0.01 .01 size. That is a microscopic flashlight and it produces razor sharp shadows. To the right we have light size of 10 and if we increase it to 50, we'll notice two things. The first one is that uh, the light intensity decreased dramatically and the second one is now the lighting is extremely ambient. We can still see that it hits the object from the top but it's kind of omnipresent. And now we can say bottles, what does it mean? That's a quick demo of the light size versus reflections. Of course, what we call softness also applies to reflections. So here we have a relatively small light source, and as you can see, the reflection is kind of sharp. As soon as we increase the light source size, obviously we'll also increase uh, the size of the reflection of this light source. And that's so important when we talk about reflective and refractive materials like glass. Because in case of these bottles, the softness of the light is just the area of the reflection. It's looking awesome, and despite the fact that it's just semantics, we can say that now the light is softer, the reflection is softer, and everything is softer. That's how we talk about softness in the context of the reflective shaders. So once again, if we make the area light smaller, we get a sharp specular highlights, and as we are increasing its size, we get a softer look and feel of lighting. And because I love rendering these quick visual comparisons, here is the light size of 10 and the light size of 1. And whoa, both of them look okay. I can't say that I love one or the other. They're both cool. Okay, folks, and once again, it's important to point out that as you're moving the light source farther away from the model, it not only gets less intensive, but it also gets sharper. So, for example, the sun, this orangey star in the sky, is a very large light source. Naturally, it's also very far away. So the relative size of this light source for us is pretty small. And thus we have very sharp shadows. So here we have the light source of the size 15 and the distance 3. And now we have the same light size but the distance is 30. And we can see that the shadows and everything became sharper. Because the apparent size of the light source in relationship to the object is now smaller. Pretty much that's it about softness. If you're gonna take just one thing away from this tutorial, it would be this. The larger is the actual area of the light source, the softer is the light. And the softest light we can get is this, if we just crank up the strength of the environment like this. 
that will create the most ambient, the most uniform lighting ever. But in the crevices of the model, you will still see this contact shadows. And that gives us the clues that help us to read this model as 3D. And the next crucial quality of any light source is direction, of course. If you want to be able to interpret any kind of light setup, this is a crucial parameter to analyze. And before I tweak the light in here, I'm gonna set the puppet mode to a 3D cursor instead of active element. So click here and click 3D cursor. Now I'm hitting the R button and look at this, we are rotating uh, the light source around the 3D cursor. And that's very very easy and very convenient way to tweak the lighting quickly. So for example, if we reposition the light like this, we can call this a side lighting. So technically now the light rays are hitting the object from the left. We can reposition it like this by hitting R, or maybe like this, and this will be the front lighting. And take a look at how flat it is. The important thing to keep in mind is that the direction of light depends not only on the position of the light source, but also on the position of the model and on the position of the camera. And if you change one of these three things, for example, if you move the camera slightly to the left, you will automatically change the other two things. For example, right now it's a backlighting, but if I select the camera and rotate it around the model, surprise, surprise, it will become a side lighting. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. No, actually it's not. Maybe just a little touch, and if you take into account other parameters. But if you rotate it like this, it will be front lighting. So practically, if you want to tweak the direction, it's not always about uh, rotating the light source or repositioning it. Sometimes what you really mean to do is just change the pose of the model, and that will do the trick. So the direction in which the light rays are propagating, and the position of the camera in relationship to the light source and the model, all of this is light direction. At the first glance it may look confusing, but don't be confused, it's very easy. And as usual here is a quick comparison graphic. Here we can see front, side and back lighting with a fancy hand-drawn arrows here and there. The arrows are very important because they indicate the direction of the light. But mm, these arrows don't take other factors into their account. Never mind. The next thing is texture. When we talked about the color of the light source, we have used uh, the image texture for the color socket. So let's now use something different. Let's go texture, noise texture, and drag it over here. What I'm going to do next is crank up the details to make it look a little bit sharper. And as usual, to be able to manipulate the texture coordinates, I'm going to add the texture coordinates node, use the normal output connected to the vector input of the noise texture. And also I'm going to press Shift A and go Input Vector Mapping. By using the location we can slide the texture. Uh, let's imagine that we don't want to influence the actual color of the light, but we want to influence the intensity. So let's make some space here and add the Color Ramp node to be able to crank up the contrast. So I'm dropping it between these two nodes and I'm dragging these flags closer to each other to really boost the contrast. And now we can see how this noise texture affects the intensity of the light source, or rather how it affects the throw pattern. And we can, for example, tweak this scale to make it look like the light is shining through the leaves. And maybe increase the contrast even further, like this. And by manipulating the throw pattern or the texture of the light source, we can achieve very interesting effects. The dappled light, for example. One thing that's worth mentioning is uh, that the sharpness of the texture depends on the size of the light source. So if we reduce the size, right now it's set to 0.1, let's set it to 0.01. And this will make the pattern really, really sharp. By utilizing the light texture and the smaller size of the light, we are achieving the cinema projector effect practically. So that is the quality of light number 5, and we can use light texture to influence the color of the light source or the intensity, or both. To the left you can see the example of the light texture used mainly to influence the color, and to the right is the intensity shenanigans. And once again, we can use any kind of images. You can use the image of your cat, or a high dynamic range panorama of your room, whatever. We can slide the texture coordinates by manipulating the location parameter in the mapping node, or you can rotate and tilt it if you'd want. 
And there are so many different uses for this technique, just imagine it. And as I've said, one important thing about light textures is that they can be influenced by the light source size. Just like softness of light correlates with its size. And texture just obeys this rule. So at the size of 0.01, .01, it works like a projector. At 0.05, it looks like the sun is peeking through the clouds and through the leaves. And at 0.2, it's getting very, very ambient. Okay, cool. And the sixth quality of light that we're gonna be talking about is distribution. Basically, we wanna know what parts of the image will be lit. What will be the focus of the spotlight and what parts of the image will be in shadows because uh, the light rays were blocked by some object. So we can call this quality distribution. And based on the distribution, you can set up the theatrical lighting, which will use the so-called pools of light, like you see here. So this light quality, as well as the other qualities, are linked to uh, the concept of mood, feeling, and other subjective things. But really, this is a kind of an undefined word that we define on a case-by-case -case basis. Nevertheless, we still can use it when we analyze uh, the lighting setups that we like. And even when we use very ambient lights, we still can say a word or two about distribution. At least it can help us to differentiate between the ambient light and the spotlight that is hitting the robot from behind. These light sources have different distribution, you may say, as well as different softness, different color, and different intensity. Okay, fantastic. Here I can see the different examples of distribution. Next, we're going to talk about quality of light, that is, movement. Simply speaking, any change in the intensity, in the color, in the distribution, in the texture of the light source is movement. As you can see here, we have a softer kind of flickering light hitting the object from behind. Also, we can see that the main light source, this directional warm light, uh, is kind of changing the position. And the background plate itself is a little bit wiggling. That is movement, and any change in any light quality is movement. Basically, that's it. That's seven crucial qualities of light. Uh, of course, there are many other different technical things. Uh, for example, when we are dealing with lighting in 3D, in Blender precisely, we can separate the direct light from the bounced light. Also, we can say a thing or two about volume light. But that is, of course, outside the scope of this tutorial. You can check the volume light tutorial on creativeshrimp.com. Check it out, you won't regret. And the other thing that we can mention is baked light versus ray traced light. That is something to keep in mind too. And if you want to learn more about baked light, check out this tutorial. The link is in the description. This is the technical stuff, which is only relevant in 3D. But seven light qualities that we've been talking about today are important in any situation, so let's recall them. The first one is intensity of the light source, light versus dark. The second one is color. The third one is softness. Number four is direction, which is relative to the model position. The fifth one is light texture. Number six is distribution. And finally we have movement, it's number seven. That's it, guys. And just to remind you, this awesome model was given to us by Master Zeon. He made it using his own hard offset done for Blender, and I recommend you to check it out. Alright, guys, I hope you enjoyed this lighting tutorial, and now we can analyze any type of lighting setup. Because now we know everything about light, isn't it? Alright, dudes, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. That was Gleb Alexandra for CreativeShrimp.com. Feel free to share, subscribe, and leave your comments below. Also make sure to check HDR image-based lighting video course. Uh, the link is in the description. Thanks for watching and bye! Isn't that amazing? Hey!